For an interesting example of the class equation, let's consider the dihedral groups. As usual, our results split into two cases, when n is even and when n is odd. Now recall the dihedral group with two n elements. We write this d sub 2n, sometimes it's written d sub n, will be the symmetry group of a regular n-sided polygon. For reference, okay, here we have a regular hexagon. We'll assume it's centered at the origin. I'll always put the vertex labeled 1 on the positive real axis. For the other labels, we'll go in increasing order counterclockwise. Now, for here, I'm not going to use the labels, but I do want this vertex on the positive real axis. Instead, we use the group presented as generators and relations. So we have two generators. First is going to be R, which is going to be the rotation that carries 1 to 2. Second, C, is going to be reflection across the x-axis. Then we have R has order n, C has order 2. And if I conjugate R by C, okay, noting that C equals C inverse, we get R inverse. In practice, we use that last rule as, okay, if I want to interchange C and R, the R picks up an inverse. Now, this completely describes our dihedral group, and we can write all the elements as so. So the first row is going to be our rotation subgroup. It's normal because it is index 2. Second row are going to be the symmetries given by reflections. So these all have order 2. Now, for the class equation, we first find the conjugacy classes. We'll start with the rotations. So I'll choose some r of the k. Okay, we'll assume this is not the identity element. We take our r of the k, and then we're going to conjugate by all possible elements in the group. Now, if we conjugate by another rotation, we just get back r of the k, because the rotations commute with one another. If we Conjugate by reflection, so I'll take C, R, the L. We have the inverse, so recall we have inverse of a product is just given by reverse the order. Each term picks up an inverse. On the inside, R, the L cancels with R, the minus L, so we have R, the K. Then we have the C's on the outside. We use the rule to switch, okay, or note that we're just conjugating, and we get R to the minus K. So, for a rotation, we have at most two elements in the class. We have r of the k and r of the minus k. As usual, things break into cases. So you'll note, if we have n even and k equal to n over 2, then we have only one element in the class. We'll have r to the n over 2. Otherwise, we're going to have two distinct elements, r of the k, r of the minus k. Now, some things to note. For this first case, okay, recall if we have classes that are singletons, then that element has to be in the center. In this case, r to the n over 2 we've seen is in the center, gets rotation by 180 degrees, so that checks out. Okay, if we're interested in the centralizer, that's going to be the entire group. For the second case, okay, well, here we have a rotation. If we're in a case where we're not looking at the rotation that's in the center, then the centralizer here is just going to be the rotation subgroup. So if we check the cardinality equation, okay, what do we have? We have number of elements in the class is equal to order of the group divided by the number of elements in the centralizer. So there we expect to get 2n over n or two elements out. Okay, and that checks out. Now, for the classes associated with reflections, okay, let's pick a reflection CR of the K. We're going to take all conjugations. If I use a rotation, okay, we conjugate, we do one interchange, and I get CR of the K minus 2L, where we consider all L. For a reflection, we can use CR of the L, we conjugate, we need to use the inverse rule for a product, then we get C R the minus K plus 2L. And then again, we're going to have two cases. First, when N is odd, we're going to have all reflections falling into one class. 
If n is even, the reflection split into two classes. One, where the exponent on the rotation part is even, the other, where the exponent is odd. Now, there's a nice picture for this. So what are these? For the reflections where the exponent is even, we're looking at reflections that fix two opposing vertices. So we're gonna have this, this, and this. On the other hand, when the exponent's odd, we're gonna have reflections that fix two opposing edges. Okay, not point-wise, just these opposing edges get mapped back to themselves. So this, this, and this. So we get a nice clean split. Now when n is odd, you'll note all reflections are gonna be of the same form. We're gonna have a vertex with an opposing edge. If we check our cardinality equation, what do we have? So when n is odd, if I take the centralizer of the element c, we're just gonna get e and c itself. So if we compute the cardinality, we're gonna have Okay, 2n, the order of the group, divided by the order of the centralizer, gives us n, and that's the number of reflections. When n is even, okay, note, now we're gonna have a center to deal with. So we take centralizer of c, we have identity element, we have c itself, I have the element from the center, so r to the n over two, and then I have the product of these two. So I also have c r to the n over two. We use the cardinality rule. So we have the order of the group is 2n. We divide by the order of the centralizer, which is 4, and I get n over 2. So that's one half of our split. And then you can check for centralizer of CR to get the other one. Let's put everything together in the class equation. That says the order of the group is equal to the order of the center plus the sum of the orders for elements not in the center. In a sum, we only use one representative for each class. Now, when n is odd, order of the group is 2n, we get a 1 from the identity element. That's going to leave me with n minus 1 rotations. They occur in pairs, so we're going to have n minus 1 over two classes for rotations with two elements each. Then, for the reflections, they all fall into one class, so we have n of them in this class. Okay, you add that up, and we get 2n. When n is even, okay, things are breaking up all over the place. So we have 2n, we have one element for the identity, one for the other element in the center. For the rotations, okay, we're taking away these two, so I have n minus 2 divided by 2. That's the number of classes, and there's two in each class. Then, for the reflections, they split evenly into two classes. So we get n over 2, n over 2. We add this up, we get 2n as promised. Now, one last thing we can do with conjugacy classes, okay, we can put them together to get normal subgroups. So remember, this partition we get on the group from conjugacy classes persists when we look at normal subgroups in the group. So for instance, if I take Okay, the rotation subgroup, okay, that is index 2, so it's normal. So I can express that as a sum of conjugacy classes. Okay, and that's given by when n is odd. Take the identity class, and then we're going to put in each of these inverse pairs. n is even, same idea. We have inverse pairs, we have the identity, and then we have the element in the center. Now it'll turn out, I'll let you play around with it. If I take any subgroup of the rotation subgroup, that'll be normal in D2n. Okay, and that's because if I take conjugation by reflection, it's going to send each rotation to its inverse. And if I have a subgroup, it's already closed under inverses. When n is even, we also have another interesting subgroup. We have subgroup isomorphic to D sub n. So what we do is we're going to take all rotations with even exponents, and then we're going to take the class of reflections corresponding to the even exponent. So you see here, if I multiply any two elements from either one of these together, we wind up back into this set. For the picture, 
Okay, we'll do it with a hexagon. What we're doing is, here we're taking all reflections that fix two opposing vertices. So if I draw a hexagon, we draw in equilateral triangle. So these are gonna map the vertices of the triangle back to itself. Then with the even rotations, we're also mapping the triangle back to itself. So I'm gonna have a dihedral group for the polygon with n over two vertices inside of our main dihedral group.